We're learning how to perform deck inspections in InterNACHI's How to Perform Deck Inspections course, and we're at the supports and connections part of the course. And we're gonna talk about girders and beams. We have an illustration here showing the minimum distance of untreated support members from the ground. Untreated joists should be at least 18 inches away from the ground. Girders and beam, beam plies, should be at least 12 inches away from the ground. However, in many situations, exceptions are made where the elevation of the home does not provide for these minimum distances and the climate is very dry. Beam plies should be fastened together with two rows of 10 penny, three inch nails at a minimum of 16 inches on center along each edge. 2021 IRC table R507.5 includes single ply beams in all listed species, including redwood and cedar. Single ply beams are useful for lighter loads and shorter spans. Single ply beams also eliminate decay caused by water being trapped between two or more beam plies. So when you are underneath the deck, inspecting from bottom up, look for these beams and girders and make sure that they are treated, identify the untreated ones, and make sure there's plenty of clearance between the ground level and the beams and girders of the deck. This illustration shows a girder improperly relying on the sheer strength of a couple lag bolts. Girders should bear directly on posts. Here's a girder, a beam ply, bearing directly on a post with a full beam resting and at least two inches minimum. Girders should bear directly on posts and the remainder of the notched post should be at least two inches thick. Here's another illustration. There's a beam ply to two by joists fastened together there's through bolts here. And this is a minimum six by six post. The notch of the post accommodates a full bearing of the beam onto the post. Here's an illustration here showing a girder or double ply properly resting on a post. Girders should bear directly on posts. This illustration here shows a butt joint or a splice improperly located within a girder span. Butt joints or splices in a girder span are generally not permitted unless specifically engineered. And a butt joint or a splice should be positioned not in between the span, but to land on the post, at the post. Here's an illustration showing the notches in a supporting beam. And here's an illustration of a joist of a deck. Notches in solid lumber and beams must not be greater than one sixth the depth. There's one sixth the, the depth in this notch in the span. Must not be longer than one third the depth. There's the one third the depth maximum. And must not be located in the middle third of the span. So no notches right here. Notches at the end, like this one, must be less than one quarter of the depth. So depth divided by four at a notch at the end. The tension side, uh, the bottom side of the joist that's spanning, of beams four inches or greater in nominal thickness must not be notched except at the ends of the beams. So you can't have any notches here. The diameter of holes bored or cut into joists or beams must not exceed one third of the depth. There's a hole there bored right through the joist D divided by three is the maximum. Oh, and this is the actual depth of the beam, the joist. Holes must not be closer than two inches, 51 millimeters, to the top or the bottom of the joist or beam. So you need some clearance there. No holes within two inches of the bottom here or the top here, or to any other hole, at least two inches away from a hole or a notch. And this illustration shows a level being used to check for a beam that's sagging under a load. But even with a carpenter's level, it can be difficult to see a beam sag from the front of it. So what you can do is eye it up from the side. 
It's easier to detect a beam sag with the eye than with a level when you're looking along the bottom edge of the beam.